so I want to tell this story from when I was super young at 17 years old. At 17, I had been living with my grandparents. My sister told a lie to my grandparents that ended up getting me kicked out. My uncle comes and picks me up, drives me about almost an hour away from where I grew up and about 45 minutes away from where I was and asks me where I want to be dropped off. The only person I could think of at the time that I had left in my life was one of my best friends from high school, Devin. I knock on Devin's door for like a half an hour, I'm knocking, I'm knocking, nobody answers. And I'm just like losing all hope. I'm like at the absolute pits of emotionally, I'm just at the very bottom. My, I lost my sister, I had a falling out with my mom, my grandparents aren't talking to me, my dad isn't talking to me, and he's cut me off from my grandparents, my other siblings, and I felt more alone in the world than I've ever felt in my entire life. I knock on my friend Devin's door, he finally answers because he was sleeping, it was like 8.30, 9 o'clock in the morning, and he answers the door and I literally just like fell into the door, hugged him and just started sobbing, and I literally, that was the closest to take in my own life that I've ever felt in my life. It was one of the biggest lows that I've had in my life and I've had other lows since then. But in that moment, I felt completely hopeless until I got to see Devin, talk to him, tell him what was going on and that friendship and basically like that family that he, I had in him was still there even though I hadn't seen him in like a year. And he immediately welcomed me in and he said I could stay at his house. After the fact, his girlfriend told me that I couldn't. But I went to sleep that night and was woken up at about two o'clock in the morning by his buddy Dan because he poured mustard in my mouth and it was like adding insult and injury. I remember picking that dude up and slamming him against the wall and said, don't you ever touch me again. Keep your hands off of me. And I was really mad. I was at a really low place. I was very angry. I was very hurt. And I was just at a super low. And so I picked myself up, woke up the next morning and I walked, because I had no car, I walked to the gas station that was just down the street and bought a Sacramento Bee newspaper. I just started calling. I knew that the one thing I needed to do was to make money and to survive. That's all I've ever known is I needed to survive. So I went back into that survival mentality and started calling every single job opportunity that was on the list. Anybody that would possibly hear me, talk to me, I got on the phone. I just started calling every single number. One of those numbers at about 20, 30 numbers in, I got a hold of a guy named Mike. I don't remember Mike's last name, but he interviewed me on the phone and said, you sound great. Why don't you come on down? It's here at the Sunrise Mall. It's a sales job. I'd love to talk to you. So I get down there, I put a, whatever decent clothes I have, I show up at the Sunrise Mall. Actually grew up going to the Sunrise Mall, got on the bus to get there, show up, and he loves me. The guy's like, man, you're smart, you got a great personality, you seem super hungry, and I'm like, look man, I'm in a really bad, bad place, I don't have anywhere to live, my, my buddy's girlfriend just told me I couldn't stay with them, I need to make money, I gotta do this. And he's like, well, how old are you? And I'm like, I'm only 17 years old. He's like, dude, I can't hire you, man. You're only 17, you have to sign contracts. I can't have you sign a contract. And I was like, dude, I'll do whatever I have to do. Please give me a chance. Please give me a chance. He's like, all right, how long till you turn 18? I'm like, like 10 months, because I just turned 17. And he's like, all right, so what we're gonna do. If anybody asks, you're just gonna say that you're 18 years old. No one's probably gonna ask you, but I'm gonna hire you. Of course, he hired me on because he loved my personality. I was genuine, I was just being me, and I really needed the opportunity. And I ended up becoming his number one salesperson at that business. That success was what got the ball rolling for me as a salesperson. I continued to build my momentum there. I ended up becoming the number one salesperson in the entire Sacramento region at 17 years old. I got to bring somebody with me. I brought Devin with me and we went to the River Cats game. We sat in a box seat above the, the, the stadium there, above the baseball field. We ate steak sandwiches and I literally felt like a king. I felt like better than I had had in years. And I realized that sales was an amazing career opportunity for me. So I thought, well, this is great. I'm gonna keep doing this for a while. Well, I come back to my job, didn't know that the economy was gonna to start to take a toll and things were gonna to start to change within his business. And he stopped paying me on time. He stopped paying me in general. And so I had to make a quick move and make a decision to leave that company. I went over to this car business and immediately got a job in the car business with another relationship. You'll start to catch this here as I continue to talk about this. I had another relationship from when I worked at Pluto's, which was like a sandwich and salad place. And I talked to this guy, Chris Kircher, who was a finance guy at John L. Sullivan Chevrolet. I immediately was offered a job. I went and started doing a sales training. I got brought on board and I started selling cars. About six, seven months in, I knew this wasn't gonna be a long-term job for me because I was working like seven days a week and sometimes more, like 14 days straight with no breaks from nine in the morning till nine at night, sometimes eight in the morning till two in the morning. It was a really hard job. It was really demanding and I really didn't like the high pressure sales environment of doing car sales. It was then that I was dating some girl at the time and I bumped into this guy that I'd played basketball with as a kid. Once again, a relationship. 
I asked the guy, hey, what do you do? And he's like, I work in the mortgage industry. And I'm like, wow, really? How'd you get into that? He's like, I just met a guy and he brought me in and I don't even have a loan license. I just originate loans. I'm like, really? He goes, check it out. He pulls out a paycheck stub, $25,000 a month that he had had. I'm like, what did you have to do to do that? He's like, I call like 200 people a day. I get these applications and I go out and visit them. They sign the deal and I get six, seven, eight, ten 10 loans a month and I make 20, 25,000, 30,000. My biggest month has been 40 grand. I'm like, what? And I'm like, dude, what's your schedule look like? And he's like, oh, I work Monday through Friday from eight to four or eight to five. And I'm like, I'm sorry, what? So between the schedule, the income and the type of job that he had, I was all about it. So I immediately put in my resignation over at the car dealership and I moved to the mortgage industry. Now we're coming into the end of 2005. And coming up to 2006, I spent six months for that company. My very first month, crushed it. I had an over $10,000 a month. I think it was like 11,500. The following month, I did like 65, 6,800. Third month, I did like five. Fourth month, I did like four. Sixth month, I think I did like three grand, two grand. It just kept getting worse and worse because the loan industry and the market was crashing. The big 2008 crash, it started in 2006. And so my income dried up. So what did I do? I realized that in that moment that I had all the relationships that I possibly needed to go off and do my own thing. And I had already been doing some nightlife entertainment stuff on the side. And so I decided to take that business full time and to start doing more graphic design at the time, thanks to my mentor, Larry, and that situation that I was in, it was really hard. So I decided to go and put my future and my income into my own hands. I decided that I was never gonna depend on my income on anybody else ever again, ever. I was not gonna do that. I didn't wanna let outside circumstances that I couldn't control, control my income and my life anymore. And so what I decided to do was to become a full-time entrepreneur. Little did I know is being an entrepreneur is a lot of work. And in the beginning, there's gonna be a lot of roadblocks, a lot of problems, a lot of trial and error, and a lot of mistakes. And I made all those. And I thankfully had a mentor in my life. I had Larry, I had a few other people that really impacted me in a major way. And so mentorship is a very big value of mine. Relationships is a number one value of mine. The relationships should always come first. And that's a big part of what I've done on my YouTube channel. So now I'm looking back at my channel, trying to understand what it is it about my story and what I wanna do on this channel that makes me different from all the other graphic designers, web designers, digital marketing agencies. And I've discovered one thing. That one thing is understanding the type of person that is willing to do anything and everything to survive. They will go after it and survive and they do not wanna let outside circumstances control their income and their livelihood and their future. And so if you wanna take your life and your future into your own hands and have success beyond what you could even imagine and not limit it to what other people are doing, entrepreneurship is the way. Whether you're doing brokering of printing, brokering of graphic design, you're actually doing graphic design, you're doing web design, you start a marketing agency, you do advertising, you do copywriting, you do anything in the creative space, it is, this is your channel and your opportunity to take control of your future and actually have a life that's not just about surviving, but thriving. Because for the longest time, all I knew was surviving. My entire childhood was about surviving. Surviving an ass kicking, surviving poor meals, having to carry my whole entire household and cleaning, having to survive being kicked out of my house, having to survive being beat up and being jumped by people, right? My whole life and my younger years were about surviving. I'm no longer in that state. I'm in a place where I'm thriving. But you have to build a foundation you have to build that community, you have to build those relationships, and you have to find mentors in order for you to reach that place. So if you're done with surviving and you wanna start thriving, I'm gonna give you the tools to start surviving, but then I'm also gonna give you the tools to start thriving. And that's really what my passion and my interest is in, is taking you from being a survivor to being a thriver. So if you're ready to take that journey with me, if you're done with putting your income and your future in the hands of other people, and you wanna take control of the money that you make, this is the channel for that. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Adrian Voicell. I hope this was impactful and I'll see you guys in the next video. Till next time, keep looking up.